The push for the country to adopt biotech cotton continues to gain momentum as scientists move to rule religious leaders to accept the concept. They also urge the government to lift the current ban imposed on genetically modified products as part of efforts to revive the ailing cotton industry. Kasheri Moses reports. At Kajinji village in Moya, Kirinyaga County, Julius Kiara holds dearly to a crop he has cultivated since 1968, cotton. The 72-year-old farmer is among the very few left cultivating the crop, which is no longer profitable. This is a widespread problem for most cotton farmers in the country. The conventional cotton they grow has low yields, is vulnerable to pests like mealybug, and takes ages to breed. Wakati tuliaja kulima, tulikuwa kulima wengi kama kwa kulima elfu sita, saidi ya elfu sita. Na sasa ni wasasa tuwe na lima, sababu ya masinda. Hata jina yetu ilifungwa kwa kuwa tili kosa pamba. According to farmers here, a two-acre cotton farm is ideally supposed to produce at least 800 kilograms of lint, but lately they have been harvesting about 200 kilograms, which translates to roughly less than 20,000 shillings annually. The alternative of conventional cotton is biotech or BT cotton, which has proved to be disease resistant, producing higher yields and in a shorter span of time. This BT cotton, however, uses genetically modified seeds, which the government banned in October of 2012, citing health concerns, a view that proponents of GMO refute. The protein which is put in the plant, cotton plant, to kill borrowers, it does not even kill other insects like aphids. It does not kill mites. It does not kill stainers. If it doesn't even kill other insects, it does not harm human beings. Some religious leaders who were once very critical about adoption of GMO products are now very open to the technology after visiting the BT Cotton Performance Trial site in Moya. Of course we have seen the difference in terms of yields, in terms of uh, effect by pesticides, uh, pests, pets, and uh, Comparing the two, of course, the BT cotton uh, is superior. Is superior. That's from what we have seen. With the revival of Rivertex Textile Company, the country now requires 10,000 bales of lint per year, which is very low compared to other manufacturing countries such as India, whose lint demand is 38 million bales annually. BT or GM cotton is currently under performance trial in different sites in the country, with farmers hoping that its positive results will persuade the government to lift the ban on GMOs. <laughs> Should Kenya decide to adopt GMO cotton, production of textile products will go up, coming as a boost to the recently recommissioned Rivertex company. The move will not only cut down on imports, but also provide for one of the government's big four agenda, which is manufacturing. Gashiri Moses, Citizen TV.